We call for our last speaker for today, Adam Phillips. Are you there, Adam? Early morning. Yes, good morning. Hi, everyone. Good morning, Adam. So why don't you, yeah, you have, great. I would, perfect, you're ready to go. Give us a show. So good as it's gonna get. Uh, fantastic to be here with everyone. Hi, my name is Adam Phillips. I'm responsible for business development and strategy at Influx. And Influx is the first intelligent video analytics uh, platform to automate the process of learning and generating contextual insights from unstructured video footage. And I'm gonna explain what that, what that means, but effectively we are working to upskill uh, people, humans in the factory environment. Uh, and I'll, uh, in this presentation, tell you a little bit about the problem that we're solving. Uh, this is a pop quiz that I find really fascinating to, to ask uh, folks, uh, which is how much do you think human workers contribute to industrial activities? Uh, the answers uh, range, uh, but I think it's a, a, it's a fun, fun exercise to do, especially since we have uh, a lot of jargon that's used in, in industry 4.0 terms like digital twin, uh, IOT, uh, predictive maintenance, all of these, all of these uh, fascinating things. But the bottom line is, is humans are still winning in the equation here uh, against machines. So 72% roughly of highly proceduralized labor in factories is still done by humans. Um, recently, uh, Elon Musk said that building a manufacturing facility is like eating glass. And I like to think that Influx uh, is, a, is designed to basically make eating glass suck less. Uh, that's, that's, that's what we do. Uh, he also said that he underestimated uh, the capability and human intelligence uh, that is required to make a factory work at scale. And so automation in many instances uh, doesn't actually solve the hundred year plus data blind spot that exists in, in factories. And we've heard some comments on that uh, today. As I mentioned, humans remain the essential forgotten element of the future of manufacturing. We hear in industry 4.0 uh, speak uh, things around connectivity, computational data power, edge computing, analytics, intelligence, uh, other different types of hardware, uh, and and uh, software, um, we 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 hear about all of these these pieces, uh, but we don't hear a lot about uh, the humans um, and uh, and and their role um, that they that that they play, um, and and so what we what we really are focused on is is covering that gap that exists. Eighty percent of those issues that happen in manufacturing uh, have everything to do with human error, right? Uh, to, to error is human, uh, it's just a, a natural uh, thing. And so it, it's important to try to figure out ways to upskill those, uh, those workers uh, to be able to do their jobs uh, better. And so we as a startup um, spun out of NASA in 2019, um, with two financing rounds from Amazon and other value added investors, including the University of Southern California, Techstars, Plug and Play, to effectively bring NASA's technology down to earth and to iron out the and augment the workers' capabilities inside of the manufacturing factory. Um, let me show you just a quick video, and this is just an illustration. Of, of what we do. It's not actually the product. You'll see some screenshots later on of the actual product in action. But I think this, uh, as, as we know, a picture is worth a thousand words. It'll give you the idea of what we do. Uh, and of course, um, if you are interested in getting a private preview of the product itself, happy to set up a time to show you what we're doing um, with major manufacturers around the globe. So we started out working with astronauts in particular, helping them guide them step-by-step step, uh, using uh, cameras. 
uh, in an edge device. As we know, uh, in deep space missions, connectivity is going to be uh, a major uh, issue with uh, particularly once we get to Mars, it's going to be a 45 minute turnaround in communications. So being able to respond on an edge device uh, to know what's going on in real time uh, becomes incredibly important as it relates to maintaining, installing, and conducting complex procedures. And we can do this in a variety of different uh, environments, as you can see. And um, that's uh, basically what we're, uh, what, we're, what we're trying to uh, accomplish uh, here uh, with bringing this, this same technology into the manufacturing space. So how do we do this? How do we build the pipeline? Well, first thing we do is we take uh, the procedure documents that exist uh, for those procedures from the lean engineers, process engineers, quality or operational excellence folks, uh, depending on, on the role uh, and title. Uh, we digitize those, we create a procedure flow. Um, we install cameras on the stations, um, typically two to three cameras uh, for angle and redundancy. And then we have a edge device that is placed on premise in the factory. Uh, we then passively collect data uh, that is uh, on that particular procedure. Uh, and we use that to train, calibrate, and then redeploy uh, our system. Uh, all of the inference that we do is in real time on the edge device. Obviously, we need to use the cloud to be able to do uh, thousands of GPU uh, simultaneous processing to be able to uh, build out uh, our, our network uh, model. Uh, but it's really straightforward. It's sold as a software as a service uh, solution. So it includes the cameras, the hardware, the edge device, and the application, including um, a heads up tablet or display if we aren't able to use the manufacturer's current display uh, that sits in front of them. So in short, it's a no code type of uh, deployment. We use commercially available cameras. We provide real time feedback to workers, which basically uh, allows us to uh, capture those deviations in real time uh, and provide full QA traceability avoiding rework down the line, which as we have heard even today is, is very costly uh, for manufacturers. And most importantly, we do this in a confidential and anonymous way. Uh, we're not interested in um, capturing biometric data or even data of individuals. We're, we're interested in understanding um, things around cycle time, step deviation, um, and even uh, ultimately using this type of system to train new workers uh, and transfer knowledge uh, from the workers that are turning over um, uh, quite excessively uh, as, we, as we know um, that is happening in the manufacturing space as, as people age out of the workforce. So it's not just in manufacturing that this problem exists, it's in all of proceduralized labor. So whether it's field uh, maintenance, um, whether it's uh, uh, other types of activities, and we believe that there is a power in, again, taking unstructured video data and understanding in context how objects are interacting with objects, people are interacting with objects, et cetera, et cetera. That's it. Um, we'd love to have a chat with you about what we're doing and share more in depth um, what we have going on uh, from a product perspective um, and uh, some of the insights we've gained in terms of increasing throughput uh, managing quality assurance concerns, and ultimately reducing rework and material waste. Thanks very much. Wonderful, Adam. Uh, it's great. So let's see. I don't see any questions right now in the chat, but um, I think uh, if you can unshare your screen. And, no, do you do you use any kind of de-identification on the data that is saved, i.e. faces? Uh, no, so we we actually um, it completely blur out any biometric data. Um, we're we're only interested on uh, procedure performance uh, in the data that uh, is is happening on on those stations. So understanding cycle times for macro steps and micro steps, which is important from a digital kaizen perspective, um, but not really interested in in understanding individual individual performance. It's really designed to uh, be able to understand. 
uh, how they can change and improve the process to uh, reduce reduce rework uh, primarily, which is uh, the main problem that uh, we're tackling. Uh, we've also started to do some recent pilots on defect detection, so of actual defect detection on parts as they go through those stations. Uh, so consolidating uh, work that might be, be done on other stations and again, upskilling those workers uh, to be able to, uh, to do more, right? Um, in, in the stations that they, uh, that where the solution is, is deployed. Great. 